I have to straighten this out as much as I can. Pull her up. In there. But I'm trying to get a wrench in here. I'm not quite sure how other people are doing this without moving the exhaust a little. Well, I guess that got on there. Just bumping into the exhaust here. Uh, yeah, I might loosen this exhaust up. Different angle, maybe. Just running right into it right here. Looks like there's a bolt up here. So, I'm going to try and pull that and see if I can get any movement out of the exhaust to get it out of the way a little bit. It is a 14 millimeter wrench in the back nut, 12 millimeter socket up here in front. No washers, on mine anyways. And that doesn't really do much of anything. I was pulling out on it and noticed these are loose anyways. This guy here, that one there is loose. So I'm going to pull that off, see if I can take this bracket off and then see if I can just get that to pull outward a little bit out of the way. So this turned out to be a six millimeter. Both the same size. Right, well, yeah, that didn't uh, give us any more movement. So, that clamp is loose. And It looks like where it comes together, but I'm still not really getting much movement. All right, so I was reading on a forum online, uh, the Concours Owners Group forum, and heard another idea. Uh, one guy stated that you can damage the exhaust gasket, so what he does is remove this bolt down here for the, right here, for the uh, bottom of the shocks, and then he said the swing arm will drop low enough to get the axle out in and out underneath the exhaust pipes. So I'm going to try that so I don't damage the exhaust. And honestly, one bolt sounds easier than removing both exhaust pipes. So <clears throat> um, another thing was that people can either cut some of the uh, fender down, like four to five inches is what I read on that forum. Or if you get the bike up on blocks here like this, which I would not recommend doing by yourself. That was kind of a pain in the butt, but um, you, you roll it up on two bys front and back. I would use a two by six or two by eight because that was a little bit perilous and I slipped off on the front wheel a couple of times trying to get it done. But you roll it up on those and then you put some two by underneath the, uh, uh, that thingy, whatever you, I don't remember what you call that. Uh, anyways. Yeah, you put that up on those, and then now your wheel's up high enough, and we'll see, but supposedly you can then get the wheel out of there without the fender being in the way. So, I got a uh, wrench, I put on 17 millimeter, put it on this side, that comes up and hits the tire if you put it on tilted inward like that. And then, I realize this is all metric, but a three quarter inch socket fit on this side. And then I was able to break it loose. But when I first twisted it, this came up, hit the tire to get this bolt loose. So I haven't taken this nut off yet. This is the first time. So oh, there it comes. I got this uh, piece of wood here kind of wedged in there to keep that wheel from dropping as soon as I pull that bolt out. Right. 
tonight. There we go. There we go. That worked pretty well. Hopefully I'm not stringing anything, letting it sag down that far. All right, I got the uh, exhaust system put back together. I got the clamp tightened down. I put a two by back under the rear wheel uh, because it wasn't quite touching the ground. I didn't want to be wrenching on it. I also put the bolt back in uh, to this piece here because it had exposed greasy needle bearings. I figured at least having that shoulder bolt back in there would help a little bit keeping stuff from getting in there so next step is to pull this axle out so I'm using a one and a sixteenth socket I'm sure there's the correct metric socket for it but uh, I have a one and sixteenth Now I gotta remove the torque link lower end bolt, which appears to be this guy right here. Alright, there's a 17 millimeter socket. Let's see if we can break it loose here. Oh, knocking the camera across the room. Ugh. Has a nut and a lock washer and a flat washer and a square headed bolt. Um, once you get that out, it says to remove the rear brake caliper. Okay. Set that up here. Got a spacer. I'll pull that out. When you're, when you're trying to pull the wheel, it hits right here between that side and the tires hitting right here on here. So the manual states to then pull these bolts off. 14 millimeter. Looks like the ratchet just barely fits in there. Ugh. That's a good knuckle buster one right here. All right, so on the other side of this <clears throat> final gear drive, there's a weep hole. And you won't, don't want that to face downward, obviously. I'm not gonna be changing the oil in here this time. I don't even know if I have enough time to do the wheel. So I'm going to try and keep that weep hole on the top. Feels like there's a spring pushing outward on here. So I'm kind of pushing it towards the drive shaft to get these bolts loose in my hand. Daddy? Yeah? Are you ready for new tires? Yep, it needs new tires. To make it on the loose? Yep. Then, do you have this? And this tire will sneak out the side here just like that. <laughs> 